My name is Eliza Thornberry, part of your average family. I have a dad, a mom, and a sister. And there are Donnie and Darwin, too. My dad hosts his nature show, and my mom films it. Okay, so we're not that average. On one of our trips, something amazing happened. And now I can talk to animals. This season, we're going around the world to film endangered species. We'll meet a lot of other animals, too. Some we expect, and probably some we don't. And we'll be going to a lot of cool places like the rainforest of Colombia, Tasmania, just south of Australia, Belize, that's in Central America, Egypt and Kenya in Africa, Iceland, the land of fire and ice, and Vancouver Island in Canada. The only question is, where to go first? Why don't you help us decide? Phew, I think we finally lost them. Oh, there you are. I was afraid you'd gotten lost. Oh, I don't feel very well. Katala, what's wrong? I must have eaten too much charcoal. I better stay here for a while. None of us will be very healthy if we don't keep moving. But we're right on the edge of the bamboo forest, and we can't stay here long. They'll find us again. Maybe one of you should go on ahead and find my family. Which one of us do you think should go on? There may be some wild dogs in there, so it'll have to be someone who can climb up and down the bamboo. Which one of you climbs better? I don't like the direction this conversation is taking. It won't be so bad, Darwin. You're really good at climbing. Just look out for the go-away birds. They're very territorial and may block your way. How am I supposed to get past them? Look for purple passion fruit. Put some down where they can see it, and they won't be able to resist it. Good luck, Darwin. We're counting on you. That's what I was afraid of. It's my herd! I've been looking for you everywhere! And I looked everywhere she didn't. Katala! Darwin said we would find you here. We're so happy you're safe. I never would have made it without my friends Eliza and Darwin. We were glad to help. How can we ever thank you, Eliza? We'll do anything. Well... I say, Marianne, are you sure you brought the camera along? Yes, dear. It's right here on my back. Mom! Dad! Eliza! Darwin! And a herd of bongos! Oh, this is a smashing coincidence. Eliza, honey, are you all right? I'm fine. And look what I found. Quick, Marianne, set up the camera before they scamper off. They're quite shy, don't you know? Well, I think they'll stay around as long as you want to film. These are bongos, the largest of all forest-dwelling antelopes. Here, in their bamboo forest habitat, one can see how their vivid stripes serve to camouflage them from predators such as leopards. Oh, hello. My name's Eliza. Tasmanian devils we are. Humans here we do not see often. Following these tracks you are not, are you? Tracks of Tasmanian tiger, they are. Our enemy, he is. Um, tracks? What tracks? I don't know anything about any tracks. Then here, why are you? Oh, I'm just looking for a friend of mine. I think he went this way. Friends of tiger, she is! Away, do not let her get!
Not only do I look awful with teased hair, eh, but there's no fox up here. There you are. How did you get up here where no one... <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. Really? First time we've gotten that reaction. You're why I came up here in the first place. Um, anyway, Mom says it's time to come back to the combi for lunch. Great, let's go! <laughs> and then, um, I climbed off the cliff and I saved the fox from the seagulls. <laughs> Did I mention I love foxes? Oh. Birds attacking a fox? I don't think I ever heard of that before. Ready with the camera, dear? Debbie! Debbie, time for lunch! Where could she have wandered off to? I'll go look for her. She couldn't have gone far. She hates to walk. All right, but don't you go far either. And watch out for the geysers. <laughs> okay, I promise. Come on, Darwin. Here are some footprints. Mm, they look about the right size. Look there! Isn't that a fox? Why is it white? That must be an arctic fox. They turn all white in the winter. Excuse me, hello? Have you seen a tall human girl with blonde hair around here? Oh yes, I just saw a girl like that. She's way up there on the cliff. The birds, they don't seem to like her too good. Thank you, we're going to get her. Oh, I wouldn't go over there if I was you. The geyser field is between us and her. It gets active this time of day and is plenty hot. Oh well, that's that. Time to go back for lunch. Isn't there any way we could get across? Well, you could if you found a way to plug the geysers. Would the chunks of ice all around here work? Well, maybe, but they wouldn't work for long. No, oh, we'll be boiled like three minute eggs. No, we won't. I'll knock in the ice with this stick. It'll be like miniature golf. I'll come along to show you the best way through. Oh well, swamps in the way. Too bad we have to turn back. And it's rush hour too. Come on, Darwin. These are capybaras. They only eat plants. They won't hurt you. There are worse things than getting hurt. Getting dirty, for example. What can the world's largest rodent do to you? They don't have to do anything. Just being the world's largest rodent is quite enough. Just follow me, Darwin. It'll be all right. Eliza, wait! Debbie, here's someone you'll want to meet. This is John, an expert on the Arctic fox. How do you do? Debbie? I say, Debbie. Fox. Oh, yeah, foxes. Foxes are so cool. I love foxes. Yeah, me too. I like nothing more in all the world. I can talk to them for hours. I mean, about them for hours. Foxes. <laughs> Wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Smashing. Perhaps you'll have time to chat later. John and I have to plan the filming now. Bye-bye. Goodbye. What a cute guy. How can I get him to notice me? I know. He loves foxes. So I'll just find one. Then we can talk or whatever. There's one on top of that hill. Here, fox, fox, fox. If you're not coming down, I'm coming up. Let's look for a door or something. This is one ugly lion. Stay close, Donnie! Donnie? Donnie, where'd you go? Donnie, where have you been? We looked everywhere for you. It's almost dark. We better get back. Hop on. I'll take you. The Braces is back from the Oasis. Eliza, there you are. Your mother was starting to worry. Donnie got lost. I had to look for him. You should never wander off alone, Donnie. But especially in the desert. Yeah, where did you go? <laughs> if only he could tell us. Uh, he probably wouldn't say anything interesting. Ah, oh, there he is! Oh, the ravens were right! Run, Eliza! Wait a minute. This isn't a scary animal. This is a totem pole. Oh, I knew it all the time. And look, the face on top is a raven. This means the ravens can come here and be safe. Let's go tell them. 
The scary animal isn't really an animal at all. What is he, a scary plant? No, it was a totem pole all covered with vines. They aren't scary, are they? Well, some of them are a little scary. But the face on the totem pole is a raven. Really? Well, that makes sense. We are quite attractive. So, you'll feel right at home there, and there's plenty to eat. Well, in that case, we'll be happy to move. Tell the varmints they can sleep all they want now. That's marmots, and I'm sure they'll be grateful. Bye! Look, Mom and Dad are filming. The marmots must be asleep already. Well, they have the right idea, if you ask me. Oh, Eliza! We were afraid the Nightwalkers had gotten you. Horrible, weren't they? No, they were just Howler Monkeys and Kinkajou playing a trick. In a way, I'm disappointed. But you can move to the new pond now. Hey, you're right. Oh, this has worked out great. Oh, I wish Donnie were here. I wonder where he is. <laughs> Lovely view of the Sphinx from here, what? Wow, it's awe-inspiring, even from this far away. I'd go for a closer look, if time allowed. Rumor has it there are secret chambers full of treasure beneath it. Treasure? Uh, probably just a myth. <laughs> Adds a bit of mystery. <laughs> what? I say, your mother seems to have finished filming the lion. Better see if she needs me. Want to come along, Darwin? Oh, I think I'd better stay here. No more cheese munchies under a hot sun for me. Oh, I don't like the look on that fellow's face either. The lion? No, the Sphinx. <laughs> you want to go, Donnie? <laughs> you want to take my picture too? Well, no. I'm too beat up looking, huh? I was in a lot of fights in my younger days. I understand. No, it's just that I don't take the pictures, and I'm going to see the Sphinx right now. Hey, maybe you could help us get over there. Sure, I even think I remember the way. Hop on, I'll give you a ride. Ah, ah, Hello, ah, excuse me. Ah, hey, quiet down. Can't you see we're trying to be noisy here? Funny you should mention that. My friends the Marmots wonder if you wouldn't mind being a little quieter. They're trying to sleep. Are they? Well, maybe they'd just like us to move. Is there any place you'd like better than here? Well, it is nice on the other side of Iceberg Lake. Plenty to eat over there. All settled then. How nice. Back to camp. Here we go. Not so fast. There's a guy over there that has a scary animal. Big, tall, and it just stands there and stares. We're, We're staying put. put. How about if Darwin and I go talk to him? And eh, we never tried that. All right. If you talk to him and he seems okay, we'll give the other side of the lake a try. Come on, Darwin! But I hate being stared at. So, here we are, in the shadow of mighty Mount Kenya, or Kirin Yaga, in the local parlance. It's going to be simply smashing filming bongos. We're making a movie about those irritating little drums. Ha! Oh, good one. Bongos are a secretive species of forest antelope. They're striped so they can conceal themselves in the shadow of the bamboo forest. Very hard to see and all that. Uh, I wish there were a few other things that were hard to see around here. They've really been studied in the wild. We'll be among the first to film them. Hey, Darwin, I bet if we found a bongo ourselves, we could talk it into posing for Mom and Dad. Let's go! No. Oh. Eliza, where are you going? Oh, um, just for a walk. The air is so fresh and clean and healthy. 
Well, don't go too far. There have been poachers sighted in the area, not to mention the wild dogs. Don't worry, we'll be careful. Behold, Tasmania! Behold, boredom! Oh, Tasmania is far from boring. Varied terrain, lush plant life, and animals found nowhere else in the world. I wish I was found anywhere else in the world. What kind of animals, Dad? How about the wedge-tailed eagle? One of the largest eagles in the world. They're said to be fascinated by whistles. There's a folk tale. They'll take you flying if you blow one. I say, Eliza, do you still have that traditional Aboriginal whistle I carved out of a reed for you? Right here, Dad. Oh, good show. But the most unusual Tasmanian animal of all is the thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger. There are tigers here? Well, they aren't real tigers, and they're not at all fierce. They're more like large, marsupial dogs. A pooch with a pouch? Precisely. Afraid they've been extinct for 50 years, though. There have been numerous sightings since then, but none authenticated. I bet we can find a Tasmanian tiger. A lot of other people have claimed to see them. Well, can't we just take their word for it? Oh, don't be scared, Darwin. Like Dad said, they aren't like real tigers. They're more like big dogs. You might have convinced me if you hadn't said big. Just follow me. Everything will be all right. No, of course I'll follow you. I don't want to be left alone. Go! What did you say, Darwin? Darwin! Hmm, must have gone back to camp. Oh, well. This is an excellent pond. Thank you for helping me get here. We were happy to help. Hey, we should go back to the commie, Darwin. It's getting dark. Oh, there's time. We've proved there's nothing around here to be afraid of. <laughs> Friend of yours? No, he's family. Hello, Mr. Tiger. I have been looking everywhere for you. Bad things happen when people look for us. People are different than they used to be. So are tigers, because there are so few of us left. And everyone is sorry for that. We just want to help. Help how? People want to protect you now. If we could take your picture and show it to them, they'd make sure you're safe. Well, maybe I should trust you. Are you sure we're headed the right way, old boy? <laughs> Eliza, there you are. I knew if we followed Darwin, we'd find you. We were worried sick. Where have you... Good heavens, a Tasmanian tiger. Yeah, they aren't extinct after all. I bet he wouldn't mind being on the show either. I have a small camera right here. A rediscovered species. Oh, this will be a smashing breakthrough for science, not to mention a network ratings but men's... Where are Mom and Dad? Getting the long lenses ready to film the cotton top tamarinds up in the treetops. Oh, yeah, wildlife. Ooh, it's not like we ever get to see any of that. And now we get to film copper top tommy rots or whatever. That's tamarinds, Debbie. They're little monkeys. Hmm. Hey, look at those cats over there. Let's go say hi. Hi, what kind of cat are you? Magesh. You'll scare away the tamarinds. I don't see any tamarinds. Are you sure they're still here? I'll go up and check for you. What? Oh, fine. Psst, there are margays all around the base of this tree. We have to get you out of here. We know that, we know that. We're gonna flee across the treetops to the thorn forest. The margays can't go there. No time to talk. Chimps are never that rude. Let's follow them, Darwin, and make sure the margays don't catch up to them. Why can't we ever look for slow, dry animals who don't like crowds? Look, there are the cotton tops. The tamarins should be close by. I saw them come in this direction through my longest lens. God, there's one that looks like Eliza. Wait, it is Eliza. How did you get all the way out here? Oh, um, I found this, you know, path and followed it here. Resourceful girl! You shouldn't have wandered away like that, dear. Sorry, Mom. But look, cotton tops. Bravo, Eliza. We can shoot from right here. 
Mmm, what's that smell? Rather like capybara. Explain to me again why we're walking and carrying all the camera equipment. This is a true wilderness area. Internal combustion vehicles are banned for miles around. How can some place you can't drive to be worth seeing? Sometimes, Debbie, the places you can't drive to are the best places to see. This is the only place to see the endangered Vancouver Island marmot in the wild. Ugh, I hope we won't have to outrun it. Doubtful. They might even be hibernating by now. We walked all the way here to film something that is asleep? Well, Lord Nelson's trousers. They aren't asleep yet. Eliza has already found one. Smashing! Let's set up the cameras. Hello, my name is Eliza, and these are my friends, Darwin and Donnie. Charmed. No monkey-eating bears around here, are there? <laughs> oh, pardon me. It's a little past my bedtime. We were afraid you'd be asleep by now. We should be. We're being kept awake. What can we do to help? Wouldn't going away quietly be helpful? What? I'm sorry. Those ravens over there, they're the noisiest of all. Do you think it would help if I talked to them? Would you? All they'd have to do is keep their voices down a little. We'd be happy to. Come on, Darwin. Well, talking can't do much harm, I hope. Don't go too far, Donnie. <laughs> Bolivia. <laughs> See if you can match your steps. <laughs> This is the mountain tapir. While it resembles a pig, it is actually related to the horse. That's nice, dear, but I stopped filming a few minutes ago. Hmm? What? Oh, quite. I was, um, rehearsing. Coming, Eliza? Can I just wait here while you pack up? I suppose. Don't wander off, though. Okay, I won't wander. One can only help. Hello, my name is Eliza. How do you do? There's nothing like a good day-long bath. And this is my favorite pond. Too bad it's drying up. Oh, well. Drying up? But then where will you take your baths? Well, there is another pond. A very nice one, but I can't go there. It's too... scary. What's scary about it? Night walkers. They live in ruins beside the pond. And they come out at night and howl and have huge glowing eyes. He's right. It's too scary. Well, why don't you go there during the day? We'll come along if it'll make you feel safer. It won't make me feel any safer. 